Greetings everyone. Friends, a really tragic thing happened on the 22nd of May 2013. A British soldier was not just killed, but literally hacked to death by two Islamic men. And this man was killed all in the name of Islamic justice. Now I say that because as you know, two guys attacked, murdered and massacred a soldier who served time in Iraq whilst they were shouting Allahu Akbar. And this was all done to send a message to the government to get the troops out of Iraq. And ironically, the main speaker in the camera said, I apologize that women had to witness this, but in our land, our women had to see the same. Therefore, he's trying to justify this act. So that man, that British soldier who was killed, was literally killed just to set an example. Now, I literally do not have words to describe how how evil that is and I, I can't even begin to imagine the shock and the disbelief that their family and friends must be going through at this time. Now as I was doing some research based upon what the other news had to say about this, the point came up that this is completely against the Islamic faith, talking about this evil act. But this is the thing, for somebody to be shouting Allah Akbar, which means God is great, whilst doing this evil act, or whilst even the people in 9-11 doing the same thing all in the name of Islam, or even the London bombings that, you know, the same terrorists that committed these things all in the name of Islam, and the number of other terrorist acts that happened under the name of Islam. Logically, you're going to want to wonder, right? Because as we all see these things, logically you're going to want to know why this seems to be the case. Because, I mean, I've, I've actually read passages in the Quran, as you can see, where it shows passages of people, you know, being destroyed and killed because they don't believe in what you believe. For example, fight those who believe not in Allah, nor the last day, nor hold that forbidden which hath been forbidden by Allah and his messenger, nor acknowledge a religion of truth, even if they are of the people of the book, which are Christians, until they pay the jizya with willing submission and feel themselves subdued. O you who believe, fight those of the unbelievers who are near to you and let them find in you hardness. Now this isn't just based upon what I read in the Quran, but I've also heard first-hand witness of what would happen if you were to to even leave the Islamic faith. But what is the penalty for apostasy? What is the penalty for leaving the Muslim faith? If it's an Islamic country, then the Sharia is very clear. Apostasy, ap apostasy is dealt with the death penalty. Thank you. You see, in the Bible, it mentions a very, very key point. John chapter 14, verse 11. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me. If not, believe because of the things I do. Now what Jesus said is pretty self-explanatory, but what Jesus is mainly saying is that if you don't believe me for who I am, then believe me based upon the works that I'm doing because it's obviously supernatural. So is it fair of me to say Islam? You have a lot of explaining to do, especially when it comes towards this declaration that they say that they are a religion of peace. And especially based upon the fact that the verses that I've read and the verses that I've come to understand do not really promote peace. So is it fair? Yeah, I will say so. Now, the reason why I'm making this video, not only for obvious reasons, is mainly for someone to explain to me how this is a religion of peace when it does not promote peace. Now, I'm not the only one that wants to know about this because I'm sure that the people in this picture also want to know. Now, these people who after hearing what happened, they turned their anger on the mosques and started to attack the mosques itself. Even though it may not be the right thing what they did, but it seems fair enough that their actions show that, you know, they've just completely had enough. So Islam being a religion of peace is under question. For another example, I can't understand that if Islam also believes in the Torah, as well as the Old Testament prophets like David, Solomon, Abraham, and Moses, especially Moses, I can't understand how this evil act can transpire, not just with this this butchering, but with also 9-11 and the London bombings, etc. I can't understand, especially as the prophet that they believe in says in the book of Exodus chapter 30, sorry, Exodus chapter 20, verse 13, thou shalt not kill. Or even in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 34, but the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you, and thou shalt love him as thyself. In other words, love others just as they belong to you. Or even Jesus' words, who they also believe in, who says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 44, But I say unto you, love your enemies, 
Bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. So based upon what I've read, and I'm talking about what I've read from the Quran, I would say that these men were living out their religion. The threats of death, the acts of murder are all justified because I can't see Islam being a religion of peace. So you guys are sitting here preaching about uh, Muhammad and Jesus, eh? Uh, well, you go ahead and share your point, sir. Get the point, sir. Yes. My point Same is, name. I'm going to hang you like Jesus was hung, you son of a bitch. Oh, yeah. Now, I know many Muslims are not like this, as I stated in my disclaimer, which is why I want to know what they, I mean, rather, why they believe in what they believe. When, if I'm going to be honest, doesn't really correlate with what they're actually doing, or with what they believe to begin with. That being a religion of peace. And this is why I'm not really directing my finger at the people who did the acts. Rather, I'm going to the verses in the Quran itself. So Islam, you have a lot of explaining to do. But regarding the family of the soldier who was murdered to death, is my sincere condolence and also my prayers towards them. And I can understand the shock, the terror that, they're, that they all must be going through. And I'm very sorry based upon what happened. And I'm not just singling out that soldier because I do understand that there are many people in the world who go through these things too, even in the Islamic country. But based upon the subject of this video, two things need to be carried out. Let's keep our prayers and our condolences to the family of the murdered soldier as well as their friends. And secondly, Islam, you have a lot of explaining to do. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video and may God bless each and every one of us, especially the family of the murdered soldier. Bye for now.